For the last time, I don't know what has become of Harley Warren. Although I think, almost hope he is in a peaceful oblivion, if there be anywhere so blessed a thing. Look, you were with Mr. Warren the night he disappeared. You're his only known associate. Our witness saw you together that night on the Gainesville Pike. You are the only one who can tell us where he is. I, it's true. I have for five years been his closest friend and a partial sharer of his terrible researches into the unknown. Yeah, I will not deny, although my memory is uncertain and indistinct, that this witness of yours may have seen us together, as you say, at half past eleven on the Gainesville Pike on that awful night. But of what followed, and of the reason I was found alone and dazed on the edge of the swamp next morning, I must insist I know nothing save what I have told you over and over again. There is nowhere in the swamp that remotely resembles the place you describe. I know nothing beyond what I saw. Vision or nightmare it may have been. The vision or nightmare I fervently hope it was. Yet it is all that my mind retains of what took place in those shocking hours after we left the sight of men. And why Harley Warren did not return, he or his shade. <laughs> or some nameless thing I cannot describe. Alone can tell. What were you after in this supposed graveyard? As I have said before, the, uh, the weird studies of Harley Warren's were well known to me, and to some extent shared by me. Of his vast collection of strange, rare books on forbidden subjects, I have read all that are written in languages of which I am the master. As to the nature of our studies, must I say again that I no longer retain full comprehension? It seems to me rather merciful that I should not, for they were terrible studies, which I conducted more out of a reluctant fascination than an actual inclination. But Warren always dominated me, and sometimes I feared him. But I do not fear him now, for I suspect he has known horrors beyond my ken. Now I fear for him. And what exactly did you find in this graveyard? Once more, I say I have no clear idea of our object on that night. And it certainly had much to do with something in the book that Warren carried with him. That strange volume which undecipherable characters that came to him from India a month before. And your witness says he saw us together at half past eleven on the Gainesville Pike headed for Big Cypress Swamp. Well, this is probably true, but I have no clear memory of it. The picture seared into my soul is of one scene only, and the hour must have been long after midnight because a waning crescent moon was high in the vaporous heavens. The place was an ancient cemetery, so ancient that I trembled at the manifold signs of immemorial years. My first vivid impressions of my own presence in this terrible necropolis concern the act of pausing with Warren before a certain half-obliterated sepulcher and throwing down some burdens which we seem to have been carrying. Will you take all the risks? 
No. I said, well, you cannot accompany me. I stand by what I have said. I'm doing you a disservice to allow you to follow me. So you expect me to just sit up here and wait for you to return? Yes. No! I tell you, I am coming with you. Fine. Then the expedition is off. If you refuse to see reason, then I shall not continue. You cannot go alone. I have the key to this venture. Very well. But this is against my better judgment. fantasies and illusions. And the grotesque shrines and monoliths seem to assume a hideous personality, a half sentience. Amorphous shadows seem to lurk in the dark recesses of that weed-choked hollow, and to flit as in some blasphemous ceremonial procession past the portals of the tombs in the hillside. Shadows which could not have been cast by that pallid, peering crescent moon. I constantly consulted my watch by the light of my electric lantern and listened with a feverish anxiety at the receiver of my telephone for over a quarter of an hour. And yet I heard nothing. Carter, Carter, if you could see what I'm seeing, it's terrible, monstrous, unbelievable. Warren, what is it? What is it? I can't tell you, Carter. It's too utterly beyond thought. I dare not tell you. No, I could know this and live. I never dreamed of this. What is it? Warren, answer me! Carter, for the love of God, put the slap back and get out of this if you can. Quick. Everything else made to the outside. It's your only chance. Do as I say. Don't ask me to explain. I heard, yet was only able to repeat my frantic questions. Around me were the shadows and, and the tombs and the darkness. And below me, some peril beyond the radius of the human imagination. My friend was in greater danger than I, and through my fear I felt a vague resentment that he deemed me capable of deserting him under such circumstances. Beat it! Put the slap back and beat it, Carter! Warren! Brace up! I'm coming down! Don't! You can't understand. It's too late. It's my own fault. Put the slap back and run! There's nothing else you or anyone can do now. Quick, before it's too late! I tried not to heed him tried to break through the paralysis which held me and to fulfill my vow to rush down to his aid. But his next whisper found me still held inert in the chains of stark horror. Carter, hurry. It's no use. You must go. I want them to slap. They're nearly over now. Don't make it harder. Come up those down steps and run for your life. He's in time. Swap, Carter. Let's see you again. These hellish things, legions. Oh my God, be it, be it, be it! After that was silence. I know not how many aeons I sat stupefied, whispering, muttering, calling, screaming into that telephone. Over and over again through those eons, I whispered and muttered, called, shouted, and screamed, Warren. Answer me! Are you there? Then there came to me the crabbing horror of them all. I have said that eons seemed to elapse after Warren shrieked forth his last despairing warning, that only my own cries now broke the hideous silence. But after a while, there was a further clicking in the receiver, and I strained my ears to listen. Again, I called out, Warren, are you there? And in response, I heard the thing which had brought this cloud over my mind. 
I do not try, sir, to account for that thing, that voice, nor can I venture to describe it in detail since the first words took away my consciousness, creating a mental blank which lasted to the time of my awakening in the hospital. Shall I say that the voice was deep, hollow, gelatinous, remote, unearthly, inhuman, disembodied? What shall I say? That was the end of my experience and is the end of my story. I heard it and knew no more as I sat petrified in that unknown cemetery in the hollow amidst the fallen stones and the crumbling tombs, the rank vegetation and the miasmal vapors. I heard it welling up from the damnable depths of that open sepulcher as amorphous, necrophagous shadows danced beneath an accursed waning moon. And this is what it said. You fool, Warren is dead. <laughs>